Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Excited to share with you another booster from Y Try. We want to, again, every day try to get everybody a booster and, and keep everybody's spirits up. Um, hearing amazing things this morning and today, just seeing what all these different things people are doing to not give up, to push through during these difficult times. Um, I'm proud of so many people, man. It's amazing what everybody out there is doing. As you can see, I'm in my home today. Um, I'm going to be from my home here probably for a while. I'm excited to um, be here and continue to share these important things with you. Um, today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects is get some production therapy. The impact this had on my life was tremendous. A huge part of my life, I'd probably say the first, um, man, probably first 15, 16 years of my life, I was the least productive human being on the planet. <laughs> I didn't do too many things that were productive. And um, when I learned about production therapy, it had a huge impact on my personal resilience. And it's, the reason why I use the word therapy with production, you might not ever heard those two words together, production and therapy, but it is literally therapeutic to build something, produce something. Um, and I, I want to talk a little bit about that and, and kind of how I was introduced to that. Um, when I was about 14 years old, I had a brilliant idea to go paint my name on a water tower behind my school. And my street name was Mighty Moore. I was the smallest one in the group, so it was kind of the opposite of persona. So I would go paint Mighty Moore on the water tower. And at recess, I'm showing my buddies the, the beautiful artwork. And it's, there's a metal sign drilled into the water tower. It says $2,000 reward leading to the arrest of the person that did this. And so let's just say I was in a little bit of trouble at that time. And um, my grandparents were visiting. And... There, you know, there's five brothers, six sisters, and my grandparents knew that the home life was pretty crazy. And they could only take one kid out of the house. So I guess I got the lottery pick. They decided to take me with them out here to the Rocky Mountains, out here to Utah. And um, my grandfather was a World War II veteran. You probably heard me talk about him before, but um, he was old school. Definitely, definitely old school. And he was pretty much the opposite of me. He did nothing but worked 24 seven. And quickly when I got to their house, I'm pretty sure they picked up on, I had no work ethic. I remember saying to them, you know, I want to go do this. I'm going to, I was used to staying out two, three o'clock in the morning on school night. And um, they put the hammer down and said, you got to be home at a certain time. You're going to follow these rules. You're going to do your own laundry, which I remember them explaining to me that I might have to do my own laundry. And that was mind blowing to me. I thought they were literally abusing me that I would have to do laundry. So that was, that's at what level I had no ability to work. Um, so my grandfather, he um, decided he, he needed to do some interventions. And out here in Utah, I remember one of the first interventions he did, you know, it snows quite a bit. It actually snowed this morning here in Utah. But um, he knew that. Um, I needed to, to start focusing. And so that was a tough winter, I remember, because it every, like every other day there was like five, six inches of snow on the ground. And so he had this beautiful snow blower. I can still see the snow blower. this big, beautiful red snow blower. And I'm thinking, man, this is going to be fun. I've never snow blown. So I watched him do it, and he goes, shoots the snow like six feet. This is going to be the funnest thing in the world. It's my turn to do this. And... Um, I go down to get the snow blower and he's kind of smiling. He goes, that snow blower doesn't work for you. Um, I got this red shovel here for you. And he hands me the shovel and it's a huge driveway. This is like um, kind of three, you know, a park three car driveway and a little side port. And um, it was steep. And I thought, well, maybe he's gonna grab a shovel too and help me, but it was just me. And he had me out there shoveling. And I thought, man, why is he making me work? this hard. I was so angry with him because he has a snowblower sitting right there. He knew I needed some production therapy. I needed to produce something. I can remember at the very end, you know, we're, we're done shoveling and we get this little bucket of salt. And I remember feeling, and I, I call this now the accomplishment zone, is when you um, produce something, you experience the accomplishment zone. It has a little bucket of salt. And I remember just after I had hand shoveled this driveway, throwing the salt on the driveway and feeling like, wow, why do I feel so happy right now? Why do I feel so good? And it just came from that simple, you know, my grandfather realized I needed that production therapy. Um, the other time he taught me the importance of um, 
production therapy, producing something, working hard, was the day I'll never forget. I, he introduced me to fishing. We go fishing on the Provo River, and I catch these rainbow trout. I growing up where I grew up, you know, that was an amazing thing. Going from back east and a little more of an urban environment to being able to go fish, looking up at the beautiful Rocky Mountains, and I got addicted to fishing. And I was so excited to go fishing. And this one morning, he's like, look, Christian, we're going to go fishing. But first, you know that tree I cut down the other day? See that stump right there? we got to take that stump out of the ground. And as soon as that stump is out of the ground, we're going to go fishing. And um, I had never taken a stump out of the ground before. And uh, I'm sure people are laughing out there, out there that have actually taken a stump out of the ground. So I started trying to, you know, get the stump out of the ground and it, we're making no progress. I mean, I'm working on this thing for probably three hours and the stump's not moving and it's not going anywhere. I'm digging holes around it. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. And my grandfather just has the funniest look on his face. I could tell it was the most entertaining day of his life. And literally it was eight hours later before that stump started moving and came out of the ground. And, and he's, uh, um, he has a PhD, you know, it was a World War II, so he knew how to grind, you know how to make things hard, and he also understood something called leverage. And I learned you need leverage to get a stump out of the ground. <laughs> and so we had all these poles and all these different things. He's showing me how to how to get the stump out of the ground. And I've learned since then there are some easier ways to do that. But he wanted me to do the physical thing to to pull that stump and, and to feel productive. And I'll tell you, we didn't get we didn't we didn't go fishing that day. But when that stump came out of the ground, that accomplishment zone. And when I, when I explain the accomplishment zone to kids, I'll explain to them, it's, just, it's like when you see a team, when they win the World Series, they go out there, they hug each other, they jump on each other, they go crazy, because they're experiencing, experiencing the accomplishment zone. And that's a euphoric thing. It's almost a natural euphoria that kicks in when we produce something or we do something in a, in a really, really productive way. Um, so the other thing I wanna focus on a little bit is, um, is when you're doing an activity, I, I during the day I do a lot of different activities. And some activities I do, I'm just grudging through them. They're difficult. They're frustrating. And some activities have tremendous flow to them. And I feel like I'm in a zone. And one thing I want you to pay attention to is whatever you're doing, especially during all this downtime, and you, I, I get, you can't be in zone all day or in flow all, all day. But sometime during the day, look for something and say, okay, not, um, what activity do I feel like I lose track of time. I um, my anxiety goes down, and for everybody that could be a hundred different things. But pay attention to kind of the flow, the being in that zone when you're doing something. You know, for me, it's actually what I'm doing right now. You might be thinking he is not in the zone right now, but that's <laughs> another workshop. But but it just be trying to give back to other people. I feel like that puts me in a zone. That that. Uh, like I can tell you right now, if you had a monitor hooked up to me, my endorphins have kicked in or if there's a way to measure that because when I'm doing as a speaker, when I start speaking and I, I have no audience, everybody pray for me. I've, this is the longest I've gone without an audience. And so, um, but when, I, when I'm speaking, I'm doing something productive. I, when I get into that flow, that zone. I know when I'm in it. And so I want to challenge everybody out there to be looking for those moments when you can get into that flow, you can get into that zone. And there's so many ways to, to access production therapy. Um, it could be something as simple as just organizing things in your house. Um, I know this weekend I plan on working in my yard quite a bit. I'm gonna definitely do a bunch of stuff in, in, in my yard. Um, I love um, you know just planting trees, even ripping out weeds I'm looking forward to right now. And so just, doing something like that. I can, in that zone, I'll put my headphones on, a podcast, and I'll just get into the zone, just grinding, you know, working in, in the yard. And so it could be whatever projects or hobbies that, that you do. Um, one thing I'm really encouraging people to do is to get on YouTube over the next um, couple of days, pick some subject matter you're interested in on YouTube. You know, I'm interested. This is the first time I've even done some of these um, webinars. I'm working on a podcast and doing some different things. So I'm gonna look at YouTube and, and try to learn more about something or get on YouTube, learn how to play the guitar. I've always thought I should be a rock star, so I might um, learn how to um, play the guitar or something on YouTube. I mean, just anything to shake up that, that monot monotony. Um, and I really encourage um, 
do something that you can actually see, like whether it's painting a picture or um, sewing something, building something, designing something, something that you can actually see, touch, feel. You can use all your senses as you interact with it. I remember um, a couple years ago, me and my son Cooper, we were creating, um, we were building runways for an airport where we'd have these little miniature planes on it. We kind of designed this airport and built out this airport. And at the time I was dealing with a lot of frustration, some high anxiety, but just working on that project, especially doing with my son Cooper, really, really lowered my anxiety and I, I felt that production um, therapy. So again, learning a new skill, reading a book. And by the way, and, and reading a book in something in an area that you're really, really interested in. Um, there was a book I just came across and you know, I usually just read stuff in psychology and, and mental health and motivation. But um, there's a book, I, I'll have to come back and tell you the name of it later, but there's some books, a survivalist book. Well, I've never been interested in that. But um, right now, I'm interested in the subject matter of what enables people to thrive under difficult circumstances in their physical environment, where I'm always just staying in the mental environment. And so now I'm going to listen to a book on um, Audible that I would never have had any interest in to some type of survivalist thing would have bored the tar out of me. But now I'm a little bit interested in um, learning the, the skills that you have to have to, to, you know, to deal with safety and put your family in the best situation. Which is, anyways, that's, that's just funny to, to me. But it's all, uh, that's something new. That will pull me into a world I've never even investigated. So I encourage people to do that. And I just learned that Audible is um, providing free books for kids. So definitely, definitely be looking at that. Um, so there's anything, um, yeah, just from learning a new skill to, you know, just doing something that puts you in that connection, puts you in that flow. There's, um, in my book, I want to just end with a couple quotes here from um, some people. Um, this is from Teddy Roosevelt. He says, far and away, the best prize life has to offer is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. I love that. Work hard at work worth doing. Um and then there's a quote I have in the book here. It says, one of the best ways I know of to increase my resilience is to get and stay productive. And I just kind of want to end on that. That's a goal I have. And it can be from, you know, today, I want to exercise a little bit more. I'm going to try to eat a little healthier. I'm going to try to spend more time with my family today. I'm going to um, maybe start doing three push-ups. I'm very proud I have gone off soda during this entire crisis. I haven't, so I just haven't had access to a lot of it because of my schedule. So now I haven't been on it for a while. I'm going to try to just stay off of soda, whatever that, you know, that is that makes you feel good. But um, just remember, people are the most important thing on this planet and that human connection with people in combination with some production therapy. We're all going to get through this together. Thank you for your time.